Well, have you ever heard someone say, my ultimate dream is to be average? Probably not. Well, those words open up Cheryl Martin's book. She, she dreamed to stand out, and she did, even though she had to overcome a few challenges along the way. Take a look. Cheryl Martin studied hard, went to college and finished grad school with a degree in broadcast journalism. Not bad for a girl who grew up with seven brothers in the Houston projects. Cheryl's success continued when she landed a job as a news anchor with NBC and then as a host for BET's lead story. From the outside, it looked like Cheryl had it all, but she was struggling on the inside. There was a time in my life I didn't like myself. In her book, Distinctly You, Cheryl shares the dangers of comparing ourselves to others and how the worst time in her life taught her one of life's most valuable lessons. To a foreign country. And Cheryl Martin is here with us now. now. Cheryl, it's great to meet you. It's Welcome great to, to meet you. Glad to be here. Well, I love the title of your book, Distinctly You. And you say in your book that people who say, my goal is to, to reach the top, to go as far as I go, you say they're actually missing the mark. How, how so? Because God has a purpose for each one of us, and we are only distinct when we fulfill the purpose for which God created us. God has designed each one of us with a distinction that only we can fulfill. And you talk in your book about the things that get in the way of being distinctly you. Tell us about those. In the journey of life that God has a particular path for us, if we're not careful, we encounter what I call distinctly you blockers. And you experienced something like this very early on, actually in high school, right? Yes, I did. I had my AP English teacher in my senior high school class say, Cheryl, you can't write, I'm going to give you a C, and if you don't bring your grades up, I'm gonna to have to take you out of this class. Wendy, I was devastated. I was emotionally paralyzed because I'd been the valedictorian of my junior high, wow. and I'd only made A's and one B in English, so here I have this teacher telling me this. The power of death and life is and in the your tongue. Whole, your whole uh, passion at that point is you already you wanted to be a, a broadcaster. Writer. You wanted to be a broadcaster, yes. which involves writing. Yes, and, and I wanted to go to Northwestern University, and I'm having this teacher yeah. almost derail my dream. Right. But what I love about God is God is committed to helping us go down that distinct path that he ordained for us before the foundation of the world. How did, how did you overcome those words? Because those words uh, are powerful, especially when we're at a vulnerable, we're in you know, our teenage years. How did you overcome that? Well, I talk about distinctly you builders, and the first one is let God define you. Mm. I came to understand that God only holds the right to define us because he created us with purpose, as he told Jeremiah. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I had plans for you. I set you apart. And my relationship with God, accepting Christ as a child, helped me because what I found is, while there may be blockers, right. God is right there yeah. to say, I'm gonna help get you, not where you want to go, but where I want you to go. Well, you had another big shocker in your life. You, you were married, you yes. were in a, what appeared to be a very good marriage, and three years into it, the guy just leaves and with, you know, with no reason. Um, how did that affect you? It was actually the most devastating experience of my life, one that I would not dream for anyone. Yeah. And of course, accepting Christ as a child, only wanting God's will for my life, this was not my dream. And in my lowest moment, I knew that God was with me because he said, I will be with you through the storm. I will be with you through the fire. But through that experience, Wendy, God revealed two distinctly you blockers in my own life. One was when you have a small view of God, because when all this drama was going on around me, right. and I was totally focused on that, God got my attention one day and said, Cheryl, <laughs> Cheryl, have you forgotten? I'm sovereign. Right. The same God who parted the Red Sea I'm that same God. Don't you think I could stop this yeah. anytime I wanted to? Never forget mm. how big I am, and there's a purpose. There was another blocker that he revealed in me, and that is having a large view of yourself. 
Mm. Spiritual pride. Mm. My father used to say, some people are proud and don't know it. Because well, you said in your book that you actually kind of prided yourself on having this great marriage and thought this will never happen to me. But not only that, yeah. that whole Christian notion that I've been serving God all of my life, right. bad things happen to bad people. Uh. So I'm saying God is going to bring about reconciliation and rest restoration because he hates divorce and he can do that. Sure. I was more concerned about my Christian reputation. Mm. And one day God spoke mm. to me and said, Cheryl, I'm trying to get your attention. I need you to put your spiritual pride on the altar. I can't use you right. like I want to use you. You cannot experience the distinction that I have for you full of yourself. That's good. So I need you to empty yourself of yourself. Well, you say that we need to avoid the three C's. What are the three C's? The three C's of comparing, competing, and coveting. This is tough. I mean, this is tough yes, in our business. Yes, it is. Yes, it know? is. Not only that, Facebook envy, uh, you've mm -hmm. got blog blues, Twitter tattling. We can look at other people's lives and envy what they have and compete. I have this joke, I always say, you know, if we're not having fun on Facebook, we're not having fun. <laughs> you know, and um, because, you know, you put your best, you don't put bad pictures of yourself on Facebook. You only put your best life. You put your best life. <laughs> and what happens, we can look, what I say is someone else's greatness does not take away from your distinction. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, so, not comparing, and we talked a little bit about um, the, the blockers, what are some distinctly you builders? Having a big view of God and also focus and doing your best. When I was a reporter, I interviewed an 83-year-old swimmer and I asked her, what is your goal? And she said, I swim against my own number. Oh. I have found that if we look at what God has given us, and we say, I'm going to maximize. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the very best with the package God has given me. Not only that, know who you are and know who you are not. John the Baptist was called just like Jesus, but he was never in competition with him. Now, despite what your teacher said in high school, you became a very successful news anchor. You went on to BET. You now have a very successful talk, radio talk show, uh, which is called Excellent Living. Right. But there was someone at one of these TV stations that said you would never get on the air. That happened to me, too. That happened to me in my second TV job. I was told that I should probably get out of TV. So, you know, here we are, Cheryl. Um, but, because, again, yeah. it's not what others say. It's what God says. Yeah. And we spend more time focusing on and having that relationship with him and let him guide our path. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. And I saw God open every door for me in secular television because that's where he wanted me, not for my glory, mm. but for his glory. And in your love life, do we have a love life to talk about yet? I love God with all my heart, <laughs> soul, mind, and strength. And I am confident yes. that if that's his will for me, mm -hmm. it will happen at his time. God wants Amen. us to get to that place of rest. Right of freedom and fulfillment in His will for us. Okay, well, you know I had to ask. Because. Not a problem. <laughs> All right, well, if you'd like to have more from Cheryl, <laughs> pick up a copy of her book. It's called Distinctly You, Trading Comparison and Competition for Freedom and Fulfillment. Doesn't that sound good? Well, it's available wherever books are sold. And Cheryl Martin, thanks so much for being here. You're a delight. God Thank bless you. Thank you. Thanks so much.